So, um, I guess, yeah, I, I started using Breedbase like six months ago. So, um, and I joined uh, University of Illinois and took over the wheat breeding program here about a year ago. So um, I put moving to breed base as kind of like high on my priority list of things to, to do in the breeding program or things I want to change. Because I think that by doing it, by, by implementing breed base, um, that's going to allow me to um, more easily implement a lot of the other things I want to do. So like different experimental designs or genomic selection and things like that. So I, I kind of see it as um, sort of a baseline, you know, uh, like sort of priority one in order to help facilitate using different tools um, like the field book app and, and things like that. So that's been my approach to doing it. Um, and when I took over here, the program was already using AgroBase. And um, one of the research specialists a few years ago um, did that and, and, and set it up in, in AgroBase. So that kind of made it a lot easier because everything was for the most part in a standardized format um, and with some R scripts and some help from David, I was able to get everything moved over basically in a week. So it took me one week to get all the old data in um, into Breedbase for the most part. And um, one of the things I encountered that, you know, kind of just a couple of curveballs, I guess, was that um, some of the traits, very few of them, but, you know, a couple of the traits had been um, measured in a different scale across years, even though they were called the same name. And so those are just some things like you might want to watch out for when you're doing this, you know, just to kind of make sure that all your trade information is consistent um, and just, yeah, kind of making sure things are consistent before you try to move things over. Um, but what I, what I want to talk about in, in just the presentation part, um, of my demonstration today is how to integrate breed, breed base in your day-to-day -day breeding activities or just the concept of integrating a data management system in your day-to-day -day breeding activities. Um, because I think we're used to seeing or thinking of data uh, databases as something you do at the end. Like you collect all your data and then you put it in a database. Whereas a data management system like breed base and, and even uh, there's other data, data management systems out there that um, the main, the main um, concept is that you're interacting with the database all the time as soon as you're generating any kind of data or information or journalism. <laughs> you're constantly uh, interacting with the database so that that information is generated in the system right away. And you're not having to do all that, like putting all the information in like once a year, you're doing it a little each day. So kind of just wanted to illustrate that concept here with this slide. So, um, you know, you can think about, you have a lot of different activities in your breeding program, for instance, making crosses, generating fixed lines through advancing generations, genotyping and phenotyping. And for all of these activities, there is kind of a, a parallel or tool or a, you know, there's a, there's a, component in breed base that lets you manage that germplasm, that information, and that data. So for instance, when you're making crosses, you can be adding crossing experiments and crosses to breed base. Um, when you're doing self-pollinations, you can also be adding that those germplasm um, stages in, in the database. Uh, with genotyping, you can create genotyping plates and uh, upload your genotypic data. And then with field trials, you can be adding your field trials or creating them directly in the database, generating your field books or your whatever sort of files that you're going to be using to collect data and then putting them back in. So it's, um, it's really kind of maybe a different way that, than what most people are thinking of when they're thinking of a database and that you're just, you're, you might actually be using ReadBase every day um, rather than just all at once. And um, 
you know, I'm pretty new also to, to using this system. And what I've really focused on is just getting the field trials and the phenotypic data, getting that working. Um, and over this next year, I'm going to be looking at, you know, adding all these other components. Um, but I think this is a good place to start. Um, it's something that we, and also, you know, we know the tools are working really well in the system. And also, you know, I think everybody is using some kind of a data management uh, system already. So with, when it comes to field trials and phenotyping, so it should be uh, not that difficult to use BreedBase instead of um, your current system or, you know, to kind of migrate over to this system. Um, and so with, you know, I'm just going to focus on that specifically um, and kind of the way I approached getting started to doing that and what I think um, works pretty well is, um, you know, to kind of spread out the work across the year and to, you know, to do things in, a, in a, you know, at different time points all across the year. So for instance, before you design the trials, so like sometime late summer, early fall, you wanna make sure that all your accessions or your line names are in the database with their PERDI pedigrees. Um, and so that enables you then to create the trials before planting. So that's what you're gonna to wanna to do that before, um, you know, whenever your planting date is sometime in the fall, you wanna create or upload your trials then once you know at that point in time you don't you don't have to worry about adding your accessions because you've already done that in the summer now the next step would be downloading your electronic data collection files and you know you can do that anytime before typing or sometime you know before the spring before you're out or, or you know sometimes you're taking data in the winter even you know, before anytime you you need to take data, just download those files, then you can use them directly to record your data. Then, um, you know, every time you're phenotyping, you can actually be uploading that data into the database. Um, so even if you don't have to wait until all the harvest data is in to put it in the database, you can do it um, a bit at a time to kind of spread out that workload. And that also enables you to even start analyzing the data right away rather than, you know, waiting at the end. So um, now the other thing about doing everything a little at a time is you don't have to worry about losing any information because you put it in the database. You don't have to worry about like trying to find, you know, making sure that you have all your spreadsheets in a special place, um, you know, and, and organizing those kind of files because you just use the database for that organization. So that's kind of the way um, I've been trying to do it for um, the, you know, the field trials and the phenotypic data. So you might think, you know, why should we be doing this? Um, you know, cause I know a lot of people have a system that works for them. Um, but the, you know, the reason why I did it was because um, I know that it's going to save a lot of time down the road. So, by just managing data in breed-based directly, I save time because I don't have these like intermediate, extra intermediate um, Excel steps. Also, I never have to worry about losing information or trying to keep it organized. And when I go to share it with other people like students, postdocs, they can go into the database and get it directly. I don't have to search and dig around for data. Um, and also when it comes to to analyzing that data, um, I don't have to worry about trying to combine sources and create data sets off of different Excel sheets. It's just really easy to get it right from the database and start analyzing without messing around with it and you know, kind of man managing those, you know, getting it in the right format, et cetera. Also, like when it comes to keeping pedigree information, especially, um, I think once, once I can get breed base up and running for um, crosses and generation advancement, that's going to really help to manage all that pedigree information more accurately um, to help improve selection accuracy. Um, and just, you know, in general, to avoid mistakes and, um, you know, when it comes, there's, there's always the day, I've seen cases where 
you know, things got pasted wrong from one spreadsheet to another. And then it was like, everything was off by one and nobody knew until, um, uh, wait, it was too late, you know, like it was a couple years later. So those are the things that we can avoid by, we can hopefully avoid as much as possible by using breed base and, um, and just data management systems in general. So I'm going to go now to a demonstration. Um, I'll just, before I start, you know, with creating a trial, I'll kind of show you how I have things set up so far um, with my breeding program. And then I'll walk through just creating like a demonstration trial and the field books, the phenotypic data. And then um, how once you, you know, I'll just give you kind of a demonstration of how you can query and download data in different ways once you have everything in the database. So I think I have to stop sharing the screen and then share a different screen. Hold on. This one. Okay. All right. So when I log in, I might have to log in again. No, sorry. When I log in, um, Let me actually log, well, that's fine. I guess, so, so it, the page that you get to, it, it's not this exact page, but what I like to go to first whenever I log in is manage and field trials. I just always like to start here. Um, you can click on, you know, in my view, I, I can see two breeding programs here. Mine here is University of Illinois. And I have all these folders of trials and you know, so I have my advanced breeding trials. I can expand it out and have, you know, everything that was called advanced. Um, cooperative trials, you know, all my cooperative trials are there um, and so on. And then the trials that um, we just created for this coming planting season are all not currently in folders just to make them easier. I did that just to make it easier to see what's been created and what still needs to be created. So, and everything's in alphabetical order. Um, you know, you can kind of, um, you know, I'll just give you an example. You can, you know, I can go into one of my like advanced uh, yield trial in Urbana from this past season and click on it. And I can see, you know, phenotypic summary statistics statistics um, and see, you know, let's say grain yield, I can have, see the histogram here. Um, and, you know, you can also edit information um, and so on. But I'm not going to, you know, spend too much time going into that because to be honest with you, I don't really, I don't really download data and use data like on a trial by trial basis. I'm more interested in combining across trials. So I don't, I don't typically, you know, go into this unless I need to edit something or upload data. So, um, and even then, like there are some other ways to upload data I think are easier. So um, I can go ahead and, oh wait, I wanted to show you my locations too. Okay, so I go into manage and locations. Um, so here, uh, is showing me the locations. Actually, it shows me also Kansas, which is a different program, but I guess I can sort this so that, yeah, you can see all University of Illinois locations, all the different trials that were there. And I have them uh, by farm, so I don't have individual fields as locations, but I think that is a good idea, you know, potentially. I just have I never thought of it that way. So, you know, for instance, so just to give you an example, Urbana, that's the research farm at Urbana. And within that farm, there are many different fields, but everything that's at the Urbana farm is given that location, um, you know, distinct designation. So that's how, that's how I set mine up. Um, let's see. Okay, now we'll go back to manage and field trials. And we'll just, you know, I'll just walk you through designing a new trial. So, Let's see. You just click on design new trial and, and pretty much it just walks you through it. So I'm going to say University of Illinois. 
I'm going to say the location is Urbana. Um, trial name, I'm going to say demo trial. So far, um, I've just been using phenotyping trial for all my trials, pretty much. Put year as 2021. Plot width and length, um, I haven't been using this, so I've, I've been leaving this blank. Same with field size, I've been leaving that blank. Description is required, so, you know, I can put demo, trial, whatever description you want to put there is, is fine. Let's see, a session is the stock type. And for this demonstration, I'm going to do choose complete block. And it'll also give you this little description there. So if you're in doubt of what, what this means, uh, it says, you know, generates a randomized complete block design. So, and then the first thing you have to do is validate the form. And if it's successful, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you like congratulations or anything. It just lets you click to the next step. So um, that took me a while to get used to because I, I was expecting like, I was like, wait, did it work? So yeah, um, it worked. You can continue to the next step. If, it, if there's anything missing, it will tell you, you know, let's say description is missing and you validate the form, it'll say, please supply a description. So, right. Okay, so then this is the part where um, you'll see it's, I guess it gets a little bit more complicated. I think it's still pretty easy, but um, so you'll have to put in a list of the sessions. So that list is something that um, ideally you will have created that list ahead of time. So I have this list that's demo list, um, which I could use now. There's also, you can also include checks as a separate list if you want to. Um, <clears throat> you can have all your sessions in one list. Um, the advantage of having a separate list for your checks is that that information will be recorded so that you'll say, you know, there's a column that says if it's a control and there'll be a one there if it, you know, if that a session was on the checklist at this point. So um, I'm actually going to show you how you create the list in case you didn't already do that. So for instance, I can say manage, it says, do you need to create a list? Okay, so let's pretend that I didn't create the list yet. Um, I can create a new list. So demo list to new list. So just to barge in briefly, um, in the top right part of the screen there in the corner, right next to your login name, there's a, there's a light blue button called lists. Mm -hmm. And so, so this interface that Jessica is showing you now, you can get there anytime from that, from the main screen. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. So I'm going to go manage lists. So yeah, I created that. I typed in demo list two and, and said new list. Then it shows up. It's in alphabetical order. So you just have to, you might have to page through. It's on the second page. So demo list two. Uh, it's an empty list, so now I have to put something on that list. Um, so I can add, let's say I'm going to just add a couple of um, lines there, so or varieties. So just for demonstration purposes, I'll just put a few down there. Let's say like Clark, 7, 4415, Bess, and let's say like Truman. Um, I can add, then you have to do add, and you'll see that they show up right here. You can also copy and paste from Excel into this box and do add that way. So that's kind of a nice feature. Then for the list type, I put accessions and then hit validate, and then it will check if those lines are already in the database. If it's not already in the database, then it will take you to uh, where you can add them. But I, I recommend do putting in the accessions before you um, create a list with them and before you try to create a trial because then when you upload all the information, the session information using a file, 
um, you can add information like the Purdy pedigrees and things like that. If you just add them, um, so for, I'm just going to give you an example. I'm just going to put in, um, I don't know, let's say test add and then validate. It will say list of accessions is not valid. So, um, you can say, go to manage sessions and add these to the database now. Okay, what if I click that, All right? It'll come here um, and it will let me add in a session, but it won't let me add like the Purdy pedigree for that session. So that's why I recommend doing it ahead of time um, rather than waiting until you create the trial. Okay, so now it sort of kicked me out. <laughs> so let's see. Let me start from the beginning. Design new trial. Step. Demo. Trial. Phenotyping trial 2021. Demo. Stock type, accession, design type, complete block. Validate and next step. Okay. So I have demo list two, which is the one I created just now. Um, oh, sorry, manage. I have to remove that test um, a session that I, I threw in just to show you what happens if it's not in the database. So I'm gonna remove that one. The test, the one that I created there just to show you what would happen. Okay, now I can validate again, the list pass validation, I can close this, I can close that again. All right, so now we're good to go. Um, I can say I want, you know, three blocks, so that would be three replications, next step. And so far I've been saying no to all these things. So it's, you know, this trial is not a follow up to a previous trial, but if it was, I could link them Will it be genotyped? I've been saying, you know, no, it's not going to be genotyped. And crosses, no, because uh, um, I'm just phenotyping, you know, not doing any crosses on, on this stuff. Okay, then um, for your field map, um, what I've been doing mostly is this select plot layout format, which what that does is it doesn't give row column information to your to your trial. Um, and that's because the way that I'm the way that I'm currently doing things, I don't have the um, I don't know exactly what the block dimensions should be in order to fit things into the field yet at this point in time. So what you know what I'll have to do is leave that blank for now. And then when I get the field map like all the trials and how they're going to be arranged in the field, then um, I can put that row column information later. So by clicking select plot layout format here and just leaving this blank, it's not going to put any row column information yet. So that, you know, later on I'll, I can provide that. So you can you know, change the way you want your plots named. Um, I've been doing start plot, start number at 101. It's pretty much like just up to you how you want to do it. Or if you have a prefix, I've just been leaving it like no prefix with the plot start number 101. <clears throat> Next, okay. Okay, what happened there? All right, so that was a weird bug. I don't know why that gave me an error, but it seemed to be fine. Um, let's see. Okay, so it's saying grow Colin. Yeah, so I sometimes I get these messages and I'm not 100% sure what they mean. <laughs> so, but um, maybe, yeah, John Luke and, and David might be able to provide more detail on this, but yeah, I just 
I just click close and then um, it shows you a little bit. So because there's really no, um, I didn't, I didn't um, tell it to give me a you know specific block dimensions for the kind of the spatial layout. It just shows me like each replicate is a row. So here's rep one, rep two, rep three, and you'll notice the row column information is not there, but you have the block number and the rep number, which are the same for this design. Um, and then the accessions, these are your unique plot IDs. And so it's a little bit of a preview for how that information is going to be stored in the database. And then you can, um, yeah, if you don't like the randomization, you can redo it. Um, and then, or you can just do confirm, saves trial in the database. So. All right, so save to the database with no errors. Okay, you can click there. And then that'll just take you back to your manage trials. And I can see that it's right here, the demo trial. So if I click on that trial, uh, that's where, you know, I have a lot of options here. So I can record phenotypic data directly, like through just through this um, application right here. I can see the experiment design. So this is, this is usually what I check, click on the experimental design and check that everything worked. So it'll say, design, RCBD, three blocks, three replicates, and accessions. So you want to make sure that your accessions are showing up here. If you have sometimes an error in the trial creation process, you might create a trial, but like this might be empty. So you just want to make sure that it, that's there. Um, then if you want to create the files for that you're going to use, like for the, let's say your field book files for um, recording data, you click here, upload data files, and then it'll let you create these different spreadsheets. So um, let's say like phenotyping spreadsheet, you can hit create spreadsheet. Um, then it lets you choose what traits that you wanna put. So I already made lists of traits that I use. Um, so I can say, I want all the agronomic traits and um, I, yeah, I want a, de a detailed spreadsheet. I always click this box that says include notes column because that allows you to add notes. Um, I know a lot of people use notes, like kind of comments um, and sort of qualitative observations. So that's a good place to put those. Um, and the data level is plots. I don't know if I'm taking data on plots. So hit submit and then you'll get the file here which, let's see, I think it's not sharing that part of my screen. I'll have to share screen again to show you that. Yeah. So this is the spreadsheet that I downloaded, which you can fill this in with your phenotypic data if you're uh, let's say if you're not using the Fieldbook app, this is what you'd be probably using to record your data. Then this, like once you fill this, you know, you fill this in, you can directly upload this to the database. You don't have to worry about, you know, creating a, a separate template or anything. So, okay, go back. Is there questions, right? I haven't been paying attention to the questions at all. So maybe this would be a good time to, to look at that. Um, uh, so we, we've been answering some questions in the background. Um, there might be some new ones that I haven't seen yet. Okay. Uh, Diana just asked how you're collecting data in the field, um, if you're using tablets or if you're still just recording on paper. So for uh, this past year, we just use the paper um, and, you know, enter data. But that was why, like, for me, using moving to Breedbase was such a big priority because I was like, I know I want to use the Fieldbook app, but if I, you know, I was like, if I use Breedbase first, then I can create these Fieldbook files for 
field book and you know just make the process easier so um so yeah that's that's my goal is to start using that next season uh, or starting from now even with um with um creating genotyping plates and um what was i gonna say and crosses so using more of the pheno apps during the winter and also in the summer but what's kind of nice is you don't necessarily have to use the field book so if you're not really at that point yet you can just use your phenotyping spreadsheets you can use both like maybe um maybe some people prefer not to use you know to use one or the other you know it's flexible so um let's see there's there's a question, will it let you use the same randomization at more than one location? And uh, so if it generates the random, if you use it to generate the randomization, it'll generate different randomizations for every location. If you want to use the same randomization for more than one location, you'll have to upload that yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. in that first step that Jessica showed, you can select multiple locations to create multiple trials. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what There's else? a question of whether field book is associated with breed base. Um, you know, so so field book is was or is being currently developed uh, ongoingly by um, Jess, Jesse Poland's lab at K State, uh, but we've been using it in in the project that has funded the development of breed base. So it's been integrated for a while and um, so it's well integrated. Uh, it, it should be possible to upload data directly from the tablet to the database without transiting through a computer, uh, a desktop or whatever. So I also wanted to, sh oh, sorry, is there more questions? Um, I, think, I think we're good at the moment. Okay. So I wanted to show also um, another way to upload phenotypic data. So I showed you like you can go in trial by trial and upload, but you can also go to manage and then upload. And um, let's see. So you can do manage phenotypes. So then you can upload, this is where you can upload all the different types of files. And you can upload your field book file, you can upload your phenotypic spreadsheet. And this just allows you to upload a lot of phenotypic data at once across many trials. So as long, like the only thing you really need to have in your file is that um, uh, the the plot ID and the uh, um, and your trait name. So I, let me pull up that file again just to show you. Um, So this was the detailed phenotyping spreadsheet that I created. Um, this is now the simple one is just the plot name and then your and then your traits. So I'll, I can just create it really quick over here. Um, and let's say, you know, bring you. So the the simple, the simplest form that you can upload data is, is really like this: your your plot name, and then your, um, you know, your phenotypic data, and then you can do that across many plots or across many um, trials and um, many traits at a time. So, let's see. Stop sharing. Back to breed base. Okay. Yeah, and, and this is a nice landing page. If you go like manage, upload, you have a lot of options here. Um, you know, you can add your sessions, you can add your field trials, you can add your phenotypic data. Um, yeah. Now, the same kind of the same kind of page exists for downloads. So you can download phenotypes. Um, this is pretty much what I've used on this page so far. So, um, you know, you can have 
if you have a list of accessions and trials, you can kind of get data on different accessions and trials. Um, and, and I can show you a little bit more of the lists because the list is a really important concept. You know, anytime you're creating spreadsheets or um, creating your field book, your field trials, or even downloading data, you're pretty much always going to have to be using a list of some sort. So um, these are all my lists. They're kind of, it's, I kind of have a lot of lists that I probably can delete by now. I don't need them anymore, but um, you know, I have my like advanced five state test list. So this is the accessions in that list. Um, I have also like, I made a, a different list of traits. So here's a list of all the traits that I'm using or I'm going to be using in the near future. So here I have, you know, lodging, winter kill, heading time, just all the, all the potential traits. Um, let's see, I have also different, so I have just harvest traits, which I, you know, on that list, it's just grain yield and test weight. Um, let's see, got milling and baking. So I can create different field book files for just this information or different spreadsheets that only have this information. So if I am only going to upload, let's say, quality data, I can get a file that will just be suited for that purpose. Um, here's a, here's a um, list of check accessions that um, I use in the SCAB nursery for, you know, I put them in every trial in the SCAB nursery or every uh, experiment in the SCAB nursery. So that's handy to have that there. Um, yeah, and so on. So just different lists. Also, um, what's really nice uh, when you want to download something, like I can just download, let's say, uh, here's a list of all the trials from 2018 to 2020. And so if I just put in, you know, under trials, I just select trials 2018, 2020 and hit download, I get all the data from, you know, any that has ever been recorded in those two years. Or I can select um, specific sets of traits. So I can say, okay, just want agronomic traits, and then I can hit download. Or if I would, or if I just want specific accessions, I can say, you know, I just want the accessions in, or I just want data on, you know, a few accessions. I can do it that way too. And to, I think what's really helpful in creating lists is the wizard. So I feel like this is, like the wizard is probably one thing which is really um, unique to Breedbase. I haven't seen this in other data management systems. And I think it's super helpful in being able to download different um, data sets and kind of create your data sets in different ways. So just to walk you through a little bit. So you can start with years and say, okay, I want to download um, 2020, 2019, 2018, and 2017. So let's say, you know, I want to get the last four years of data. So I can select years and then locations. I can, um, I might have to refresh. Sorry refresh this years Sorry. 2020 2019 2018 2017 and then locations um, now I can have the I have the choice to to select different what locations I want to um, include in this data set that I'm going to download so Let's say I just in, I'm only interested in the more southern locations. I can do I can select my more southern locations um, there. So then I can create I can add oh then the next thing is the trials. So I can hit um, trials is the next kind of down next um, group. So let's see, sometimes, 
One thing I notice is sometimes I have to refresh the page on this um, if it gets stuck. So it doesn't usually do that, but once in a while. Yeah, that's something we'll have to look into for you. Yeah. Let me just do a couple. Okay, then to trials. Okay, now everything. Yeah, so I just selected these years, these two locations. Now it's giving me all the trials that have been the trial names that have been tested there. And I can do select all. And then I can add this to a list. So, or create a new list. So in my case, I'm gonna create a new list. I'm gonna say um, South locate, you know, um, 2017 to 2020 and do create. And then it says, okay, those 30 items were added to that list. So this list now has 30 trials that meet that criteria of being in these years and in these locations. So when I go to download data, I can go download and then trials and I can do South 2017, 2020. And let's say I just want my yield and test weight and I can do download. I can get the file. Now I'm going to share that screen. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So this is the file I just downloaded. And you can see this is like all the information the study name, the description, the design, location, um, all the germplasm names, their synonyms. Um, this is the plot ID, you know, replicate and block. What else? Row column information, which so far I haven't, I don't have this yet in the database. Um, and then here's the, you know, the data, test weight and yield. So, and any notes too, I think, yeah. Notes are also listed there. So, so you can even see whatever notes I put in, yeah. So get your notes, which you can have multiple different notes, up, you know, if you upload different notes at different times and you know, your data there. And yeah, so it's, yeah, that's, that's one of the things I really like about this um, database is you have the ability to get data from, you know, combined across different trials, different experiments, like really easily. Um, delete that. So I don't know, I think that might be everything I was thinking of covering. Let's see. Yeah. So that's everything I was going to cover in the demonstration. Is there anything? that anybody wants demonstrated that I can maybe try to do? Do you have the ability to save the maps? This is Anna Heilman. Oh. In there I saw that you have kind of like a little map uh, that you generated for the CRD, but can you, can you save multiple maps or can a map contain, like a, can you have a whole location for example? Yes, I don't think that does that right now. Um, so if I go to this demo trial, there's like field layout tools and I can do edit field layout. Well, no, that doesn't actually do that. But there is a way to include um, like the spatial, like where the row column information is for every plot. And so in the section above, there's an upload spatial layout button. Yes. That you, you know. Yes. So, but it doesn't do that like across multiple experiments or anything. So, yeah. I don't know if that's something that people want to have added, but um, I think for me, like what I'm what I'm planning on doing actually is in the future every field is going to be one trial 
essentially, or is, I mean, that's my plan. So every field is going to have one, it's going to be one trial um, and just with different blocks. So, um, you know, I'm going to randomize instead of having like different stages, like this is my preliminary and this is my advanced and things like that. I'm, I'm going to have everything that's in one field is going to be randomized together. So that's my, that's how I'm going to deal with, you know, without to kind of like eliminate the having uh, different experiments and then different fields. Each experiment's going to be a field. That's that's the way I'm going to handle it. So just make kind of make analysis a little bit easier, and also to to make better use of that spatial um, spatial adjustments. Anything else, maybe? So there's another feature here that's summarized trials, which I haven't really used, but I think um, I think some others have started to use this. So I can um, I can say like summarize trials, choose a list of trials. Um, we can try to do like South 2017, 2020. That's going to be a lot, like 30 trials. Can select different traits and then hit summarize. And what that should do is generate a big summary table. Um, you know, be like 30 different columns. Each column is a trial where you can see how your lines performed across multiple trials, like the. That one's probably too big of a list for this for this demonstration, but maybe I can try a smaller list. Um, so another tip I was going to tell, um, kind of like my one of my on my list of tips and tricks is like if something isn't working, just try refreshing the page, and then try it again because sometimes that just happens for whatever reason it gets stuck and you can just refresh it and it'll work. Um, yeah, if you do encounter a problem like that, let us know so we can look into it because that shouldn't happen. But yeah, we do find that yeah. occasionally does happen. Yeah. So let's see. Here we go. Yeah. So it looks like I'm I'm probably not going to be able to demonstrate this feature, but um, right now, but. You know, it's just, this is not something that I typically use because I'm usually more interested in just downloading the data and analyzing it and then um, making a decision that way. Okay, so that's pretty much everything I was going to demonstrate. Um, you know, a couple tips and tricks. Yeah, refresh the page, but also <laughs> email David and, and tell him there's, a, there's an issue. Uh, another thing was if you're going to upload multiple years worth of data, that can be like really slow if you have like a lot of data you want to upload at once. So you might, you know, want to get help from David on that. So that's, you know, there was a few instances where like I had these huge lists of sessions that I wanted to upload and it was just like, it would, it would just take a long time. So, but if you have smaller bits of sessions, then it, it works fine. So, in those cases, you know, David helped me out a lot by getting it uploaded on the back end. And then the third thing is just to be like really careful with the session names and synonyms. So what, how I've kind of approached it is to try to avoid duplicating the names or creating synonyms if possible. Um, and just try to stick with like one consistent name and add, you know, the synonyms, um, if I do have them, there's, there really is only one synonym for in a session. Just, I, and I just try to keep it to a minimum. So if, if ever I can um, make one name, I, I try to do that as much as possible. Yeah, and, and you just want to be really careful not to call something a synonym when it's not, because those things will, those lines will then get associated as being like the same in the database. 
Um, and then I think um, by special requests, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the PREP designs because that's another, that's a nice feature that um, Breedbase lets you create PREP designs, not just, you know, an RCVD. Um, and, and that's, and that's really nice because using a, a PREP, it does require, you know, you using, uh, if you want to use it without Breedbase, it's a little bit, it's not as user friendly, uh, you know, you gotta get download digger and, and figure out the syntax and, and then try to use it. So, um, so that's, so that's nice that, that Breedbase lets you do that in a pretty easy way. So um, just to give you a little bit background on the PREP designs, it, it, PREP just means partially replicated. And uh, it's probably pretty similar to, um, if you're familiar with, or if you've used augmented designs, it it's, has a lot of similarities. So um, the basic idea is you have some lines which are not replicated and some lines that are replicated. So here's an example of a PREP uh, trial that I have um, going to be planted this fall. And in the white, so this layout shows you where all the entries are laid out in the field and all the blocks. So I have eight blocks. Blocks one through four are you know, my complete blocks. And um, five, six, seven, and eight, you know, that's the other complete block. So the white entries are the replicated entries. The green are the unreplicated entries. So just to point out a few, like if you look at entry number nine, it's in this block, block one, and it's in block six over here in the other complete block. Um, and so the main difference between this and say an augmented design is that you're having um, a lot more different replicated lines. So instead of having like five checks that you replicate a bunch of times, you have like in this particular design, I have 45 lines that are replicated twice. And the nice feature of that is th those 45 lines, they're actually lines that I'm interested in testing. They're like my most advanced lines. So not only are they serving as the checks, but they're also, I'm also getting more data on that, on those lines. So um, you're just, yeah, you're, I think you're more efficiently using your space rather than testing like the same old uh, checks a bunch of times. And then, you know, it's just a lot of resources that you're putting into planting and harvesting and all that um, when you're not necessarily interested in how those lines perform. Also, I really like that, you know, I can compare the different cohorts with each other. So I can use more advanced lines that they serve as checks. I'm interested in testing them. And also I can compare those advanced lines with the earlier stage um, lines. So in this particular example, I have 390 unreplicated lines and 45 replicated lines. And there's 20 rows this way and 24 columns this way. And the blocks are, it's 10 by six. So that's each of individual block. And then the other block, um, the sub block is a 10 by one block. Um, so that's kind of the specifications of this design here. And I should mention the recommend, the recommended amount of replication is 20%. This one is actually 10%. So I'm not, you know, I'm not completely adhering to the rules, but, um, you know, I definitely wouldn't go under 10% and 20% is kind of considered the recommended uh, minimum. So in order to create those designs, it's a very similar process. It's just um, when you get to the, it's in the design process, this is like step three, you get this page where you need to put in the lists of your lines you're gonna use in the trial. And you just need an unreplicated list and a replicated list. Um, and you need to already kind of know what's the number of rows you want in the design and the number of columns. So like in my example that I just showed you, the number of rows is 20, the number of columns is 24. Number of times replicated sessions are replicated. In my case, it was twice, they're replicated two times. And the block sequence was 
10 by six and then 10 by one. So you kind of need to sit down and figure out like how you want the trial to look, like how you want, you know, what are the dimensions of your trial? What are your block dimensions? Uh, you, you have to figure that out. And then when you go to make the trial, you just enter that information here. So, so yeah. I didn't demonstrate that because the last time I tried to use it, I think I encountered an error and I didn't, I didn't go and check if it was, um, if it was running yet. So, I mean, for this season, I just created the design, the P rep designs outside of ReadBase and then uploaded them. Um, but I think this might also be, it might be working already. I just didn't check yet. So, um, so yeah, just a little bit of a, you know, that's pretty much everything that, I was planning to show today, but really the main message um, that I want to convey is like data management systems like Breedbase, they're there to make things easier and not to add extra work. And I think if you use them kind of in your daily um, activities, in creating your trials, and you know, you can even create labels and um, you know, just all your activities, if you, you can pretty much find some tool in Breedbase that supports them. And then you don't necessarily have to do all this extra work at the end of trying to get your data in Breedbase. And then the other thing is, I, it can be kind of overwhelming because there's so much information and so much that you could potentially put and use in Breedbase. But my approach has been to kind of start simple and start with just trials and phenotypes well, first, you know, sessions, trials, and phenotypes, and then um, getting that going so you have kind of a routine so that you're, you know, getting your sessions in in the summer, creating your trials in the early fall, and then doing your phenotypic data, like, as, you know, entering it as you do it. So I'm getting that going and then um, kind of starting to integrate some of the other tools, um, you know, as a as the second priority. So that's been my approach. And I think it's, it's pretty good, like to just start simple and scale up. Um, so yeah, that's, that's everything I wanted to cover. If anybody has more questions or comments, let me know. <laughs>